In this video, I will provide a framework you can use to point you in the right direction of which neighborhood you should start your apartment hunt around. Before we start, please subscribe if you're moving to Boston. I'm building a channel to provide tips for moving to the city, break down different neighborhoods, and provide activities on what to do once arriving in Boston. Back to the topic at hand, I'm about to provide a list of steps to help you find your ideal neighborhood. Feel free to alter the order or eliminate steps as desired. This is your apartment search. And this is just a framework I built from my own personal experience and around my own values when weighing pros and cons of different areas. First, identify the location of your workplace and all the neighborhoods along the closest metro, aka T lines. Obviously, if you're a remote worker, you can skip this step, but for those of us who still have to be in the office, I like to first prioritize our apartment search around the commute because I hate wasting time in commuting and commuting in Boston sucks. If you drive to work at some point, if not every day, you'll be spending your free time in traffic. So I recommend prioritizing all neighborhoods that are on the same T line as your workplace. I'm going to use an example to illustrate my point. Let's say you're moving to Boston to work within the Longwood medical area. I'm choosing this area because it contains the second, fourth, and fifth largest employers in the city of Boston. So there's a decent enough chance if you're watching this video and you're moving to Boston, you'll be working there. And for the sake of this example, let's say you're working at Brigham and Women's. Thus, you commute via the Brigham Circle T stop. To apply this first step, we identify all neighborhoods on this portion of the green line. This takes us from 23 neighborhoods in Boston proper, plus 13 in Cambridge, down to six. Mission Hill, Fenway, Back Bay, Beacon Hill, the West End, and East Cambridge. Note, in the summer of 22, this line will extend into Somerville. If you really wanted to live in a part of the city where you would have to change trains, for example, East Boston, that's fine, that's your choice. Just know that now you have to spend more time waiting on an additional T line every time you commute to and from work. Again, with my values, I prioritize an easy daily commute. If you work somewhere that's not on a T line, I recommend living within a short driving distance to that location. Use Google Maps to study traffic at peak hours. Now that we've narrowed our list to six neighborhoods, we complete the second step. In this step, ask yourself, do I want to live in an old charming building or a new luxury apartment? There's a trade-off between these two types of buildings. Your luxury apartment will likely include things like in-unit laundry, a gym, utilities such as heat, and a parking space if you want to pay for one. An older apartment might have these amenities, but it's no guarantee, so do your research. Also, older buildings will likely give you the uniquely Boston feel that many believe is unmatched by new high-rises and new apartment complexes. For our example, we're going to say that the individual moving to Boston wants to absorb the history of the city and live in an older building. By this desire, they would essentially eliminate the West End and East Cambridge from their search because, generally speaking, these areas have newer apartment buildings. And yes, I acknowledge they have some older buildings that are residential, but again, predominantly, you're going to find newer units in these two areas. Now we can focus our search on Mission Hill, Fenway, Back Bay, and Beacon Hill. For our third step, identify your budget. Some people might place this step first, that's perfectly fine. Again, I prioritize the apartment hunt around limiting commute time, which I do think one, saves time, and two, increases quality of life. Either way, Boston is expensive and you really don't get a lot for what you pay. For our example, we'll go ahead and say this individual wants to live alone and is looking for a one bedroom apartment. Since they're in the Longwood medical area, we'll say they're earning the average RN salary per glass door in Boston of $78,000 per year. Dave Ramsey recommends spending no more than 25% of your take home pay on rent, but this is Boston. So for our example, we will budget closer to the national average of 36% of take home pay going towards rent. Yes, this is ridiculously high. Again, we're working with the national average here. So that leaves us with a budget of about $2,000 per month on an apartment. With this budget, you can effectively eliminate Back Bay from our search. It's the second most expensive zip code in the country. And while the apartments left in Beacon Hill may not be the nicest with the newest amenities, per apartments.com, they do exist in this price range for Beacon Hill, Fenway, and Mission Hill. From here, we move to our fourth step. Ask yourself, do I really need a car? Not having a car frees up a ton of money that would otherwise be spent on insurance, gas, maintenance, maybe a car payment, maybe even parking. And in some neighborhoods, especially Beacon Hill, it can be very difficult to have a car. And honestly, Fenway and Mission Hill aren't that much easier. In our example, our individual has elected not to have a car. So that still leaves us with Beacon Hill, Fenway, and Mission Hill. Fifth, identify what activities you would like to complete in your free time and which neighborhood puts you closest to those activities. 
For our example, our individual is a diehard Red Sox fan and wants to spend their free time at Fenway Park. Thus, this leaves us with the Fenway neighborhood and the area that our individual should begin their apartment search. There are certainly other considerations or non-negotiables that you may have in addition to these five steps. Personally, I have to have laundry in unit. Maybe you have to have a pet-friendly apartment. Maybe you have competing priorities with a potential roommate or a significant other that you have to balance. Feel free to add these constraints on top of previous steps. Again, these five steps I provided are just broad strokes to get you pointed in the right direction of what neighborhood you should decide. Because look, Boston's got so many neighborhoods. There's 23 of them. Then you add in Cambridge. Then you add in Brookline. It can be difficult to try and figure out where to begin your search. And I believe this framework can help get you started. Also, I do have to concede that I tricked you with the title of this video. You may follow these steps and realize that your perfect apartment in Boston just doesn't exist. In our example, if our individual wanted a new unit, they would not have the budget for a one bedroom in the West End or East Cambridge. So they would either need to select a studio, find a roommate, go with an older unit, or increase their commute time to a different part of the city. I know this is screwed up, but it's the reality of living in Boston. Finally, when following these steps, feel free to check out some neighborhood guides to get you started on which neighborhoods you think would be the best fit for you. On this channel, I'm building a neighborhood guide playlist. I'm going to start to put together walking tours so that if you're moving to Boston from somewhere else and you don't have much experience with the city, you can get a better feel for each neighborhood. And there's also some other good resources out there that you can check out that break down some of these neighborhoods even more in depth than I do. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions. Please like the video if you enjoyed. And please consider subscribing to this channel to see videos similar to this one.